Grey, 23rd of August 2021 and I've decided to put together a video each day if possible showing um, how I spend my time with nature, um, looking for wildlife, birds, that kind of thing despite having a 9 to 5 job Monday to Friday um, so that includes any time I get in the mornings before work, my lunch break and of course in the evenings so um, just because you've got a busy lifestyle does not mean that you can't spend time out to um, appreciate nature, um, find things on your doorstep and um, continually be doing wildlife photography because there's always something to see. So what I'm going to do is just put together short snippets, rough and ready, pretty much unedited from my iPhone and show you throughout the day whenever I see something whenever I photograph something, what you can find on your doorstep without having to go very far and I'll share those with you and uh, hopefully inspire some of you to do the same. So I'm not sure what this series will be called yet, um, I will by the time I post this video and um, hopefully I'll try to update it uh, every other day if possible, um, every day would be fantastic and um, you can see a kind of day-to-day -day diary what I get up to despite having a um, heavy workload. So let's get on with it. Now we can kick off straight away without even leaving the flat because up here is a brimstone moth that's coming overnight. I'll try and uh, I'll try and show that to you. There we go. It's a stunning little moth. It looks a bit like a, a small butterfly. A lovely lemon or pale lemon yellow colour with a chestnut front edge to the forewings there. I'm not sure if you can see, those eyes on the forewing have a slight bluish tinge to them. It's a lovely little moth, that. Now, for those that don't know, I live at Watermead in Aylesbury, Buckinghamshire, and I'm lucky enough to have one of the uh, flats that looks over the small lake here. So I've got this view, which admittedly does help with seeing things day to day, even if I just get 10 minutes out. But let me just introduce you to uh, one of my neighbours. There she is, having a little snooze. So these two feral pigeons have um, paired up and decided to make a nest on my balcony. And they've got very comfortable with me. Yeah, that's another story which I'll explain at some other time, but as you can see, she hasn't got a care in the world for me being around her. Having a little snooze, I think she's woken up because she can hear me. Good morning, how are you? Any eggs yet? No. So I, um, I've been trying to get these, uh, pigeons to be a little bit more confident with me. Most people scare them off of their balconies. Uh, I went away on holiday for a few days and when I came back they built this nest. Now it's been a couple of weeks now and I haven't seen any sign of her uh, egg laying yet but they're uh, taking turns to, to hold the nest. She is looking more and more tired which makes me think she might be ready to lay but otherwise um, no sign yet. So the nest has got slightly bigger and she has uh, at times been lining it with her own feathers so maybe that means the time is almost here. Okay so here's another little lovely moth that's been attracted to the light of my flat overnight. This is a canary shouldered thorn. It's got a lovely fluffy yellow body particularly on top hence the name and look at that lovely colour of those wings slight orange tinge what a beauty okay so just going to come for a little walk before work just to see what we can find haven't got long but there's always something to see Here's a lovely little patch of marsh woundwort. That's a beautiful flower. It looks a bit like a salvia. And the bees particularly like it. Here's a um, common carda bee. Here we 
have some beautiful purple loosestrife. Stunning colour. This is another favourite of the bees and also butterflies, and particularly the white butterflies, small white and large white. Like the marsh woundwort, this one also grows in the margins of water bodies. There's some bees there, look. Another common carder bee. Here's some of the local young swans, mute swans. Having a little rest and a preen. Good morning. So I've just seen a southern hawker dragonfly fly through here sure where it's gone but I'll try and find it. Right so I'm just coming up to the jetty at Watermead. Now I always check the jetty for the gulls that like to roost on it. If I just tap here you should be able to see it. There you go. Uh, recently the um, black-headed gulls have been coming back now that it's early autumn for the birds and um, I found some with rings, both colour rings on their legs and also metal rings. So I've been trying to read those to see where they come from. Uh, so far I've found a Polish ringed bird, um, a Finnish ringed bird, um, a Lithuanian ringed bird and, um, and one British one. So I just keep an eye on these in case I can find anything interesting. Um, and what I'll do is I'll submit those records um, to either EU ring or the BTO or whatever the relevant um, authority is for that particular country and then we can track those birds to see uh, where they were ringed, how old they are and wherever they've been seen since they've been ringed. So let's go and have a look. Some grey legs there. Grey leg geese, you can also see the one white one there. That white one has some um, domestic farmyard grey leg goose ancestry. Now, that white one bred with a uh, more regular coloured grey leg goose this year, so their offspring are um, a bit half and half. You've got some that look like the uh, regular coloured adult. Um, and some that are a bit paler. Okay, so there weren't any rings on the few goals that were there just now. Uh, they also flew quite quickly because they got frightened by somebody's dog that was walking on the other bank there. So we'll leave that for now and we'll head over in this direction where there's a, a ditch and the River Tame runs through there. It's quite good for dragonflies, so let's check it out. Now there's one dragonfly there now I can see. I'm not sure if you saw that, it looked to be a southern hawker. We'll get a bit closer and we'll check it out. This is a very good spot for banded demoiselle. But as the um, seasons are changing now, there's a lot less than there have been recently. Now this is a flowering rush. It's actually one of the few reedy type plants that have actual flowers on them, or petal flowers anyway. And the hoverflies quite like these, but you can see there's a hoverfly in there right now. Quite a few grasshoppers here. There's one.
Now this species of grasshopper was the lesser marsh grasshopper. Um, they particularly like wet grassland areas, as the name suggests. Now this area here between the River Tame and the lake behind me, when the water level rises, this does flood. Um, very often this is completely submerged. So this area here is very important habitat for this species, as it's not a habitat that's particularly common these days. Um, areas where there are floodplain meadow in particular are particularly good. Um, there'll be many more species of grasshopper here. Uh, one in particular that I like is the Rizelles bush cricket, which is a relatively recent um, addition to the UK list uh, that was first found in the UK in the early 2000s. We do have them here, so um, if I find any, I'll show you those also. Um, as you can hear, or I don't know if you can, but I think you can hear there's quite a few grasshoppers here. There's probably um, the common field grasshopper and meadow grasshopper here also. Um, but these little rough patches that are left to grow, as opposed to those that are mown behind us here, are a very important habitat for grasshopper species in general. Now I've just seen an interesting insect here. It looked like some type of fly with patterned wings. And it seemed to land in some of this ragwort here. So I'm just going to see if I can find it. Now I have just found it. It was an Oxina parientina, which is a type of large fruit fly. Now it's landed somewhere else in some of these uh, ragwort here. So let me just see if I can find it for you. Okay, so just about to head back now as I need to start my work. I did just hear a common sandpiper fly across the lake. So I'll have a quick look to see if I can see it. I don't expect I will because it sounded quite far off. So this juvenile herring gull here has a pink ring on its right leg. Now this type of ring is used by rescue organizations. It's often so that they can identify which bird needs which medication. So when they have more than one of the same type of bird in care, they can see at a glance which bird needs the right medication. So I'm not sure if you can see the ring in this footage. There we go, it's just visible. As you can see, he's also not afraid of humans because he's been in captivity for a short while. He's been here for a few weeks now and he seems to be just fine. I noticed that on his left wing he's missing some feathers so maybe he had an injury as a fledgling. But he's doing great. He's actually grown quite a bit in the last week. Now I've just heard the house martins doing their alarm call which means that there's a predator around. So their alarm call is kind of a chew chew sound and that usually means that there's either a sparrowhawk, but they don't ever seem that bothered about sparrowhawks, but most likely a hobby. And uh, I've just seen a hobby flying over in that direction there. It seemed to be hunting for dragonflies and seemed to be feeding itself mid-air. So you won't be able to see it. You won't be able to see it from here, it's tiny. It's a long distance, but I'll try and get some shots on my camera and then I can um, show you the back of camera shots to show you what I mean. So there we go, there's the hobby. You can see it's uh, distinctive white cheeks there. So a hobby is a falcon related to both the peregrine falcon and the kestrel. It's a little bit bigger than a kestrel, it's quite a bit smaller than a, a peregrine. And I'll just um, grab the picture where it's feeding itself a dragonfly, just bear with me one second. There we go, you can see there it's feeding itself a dragonfly from its talons to its bill. Now these are extremely long range photos. This was taken at 600 millimeters and I've zoomed in as far as you can go in the shot. This is the original shot. But it's great, you can use your camera to um, identify birds if you're not sure at distance by taking these sort of record shots and then zooming in and then using those for reference later on. Okay, so I've just got back to the flat. Uh, just had a buzzard and this kestrel overhead as I was coming in. It did a nice fly past for me to get some shots. Looks like a young bird, probably from this year. 
As you can see, the male feral pigeon is now sat on the nest. So he comes in, the female then goes off to feed, and then they swap places. She spends a lot more time on the nest than he does. So now it's time for me to start work. Um, nice little morning walk. Uh, four species of raptor, birds of prey. So we had, um, I had red kite, buzzard, kestrel and hobby, which I've just shown you on the photographs. And also four species of dragonfly. Um, a southern hawker, I saw a migrant hawker just before I came in. Um, I had a brown hawker and also the banded demoiselle. Um, so I'll get back to work now and then uh, when I get my lunch break, maybe we'll pop out for a bit and I'll take you with me. Right, so now I'm on my lunch break and I thought I'd try a little area just behind the estate where I saw a spotted flycatcher at the weekend. It looks a good spot to um, potentially find some migratory red starts and there's a little bit of a field where there's some sheep and the grass is low where we could also get wheat here. So I'm just going to head that way now and we'll see what we can find. Just look how many elderberries there are in this elder. for black caps in the autumn. Also so many berries on this Gelder Rose. This one's stunning. Right, so we've got two spotted flycatchers here, potentially more. Um, there's one sad just there on that branch and the other is sat there on that branch now I'm gonna see if I can get any pictures of them and also see if there's any more birds okay so I couldn't find any more than the two spotted fly catches in that corner but I'm gonna try again shortly approaching from this direction so the Sun's behind me and it'll give them a little bit of a chance to come back out into the open Meanwhile, I'll just show you this area here. This field is grazed by sheep, so the grass is short. This could potentially be good for wheat here. And the, um, the fence that runs along that edge there, with posts along it, I thought also potentially good for red start. So I'm just gonna have a little bit of a look here and see if we can dig anything out. And then I'll approach back to where these spotted flight catchers were to see if they're more likely to show themselves now. Okay, so there's one spotted flycatcher there just resting on that open perch. Let's see if it actually does some flycatching. Oh, there's two birds there now. One on the tree behind. Juvenile chiff chaff just below them. There we go. And again. And again. Okay, we've actually got at least four spotted flycatchers now. You can see one at the top of that very thin tree. There's one just there, that little white blob. There's one at the top of this tree in front of us. And there was another one with these two over here as well. So here are some pics of the spotted flycatchers. There's two there together. Here's one sat in between some elderberries. This one's quite a cute looking one. And this one posed quite nicely for me. Lovely birds. Not sure if you can see that kestrel, but uh, it's hovering just there in the air. a 
common data dragonfly here. Now I don't think I'll be able to get any closer because as I inch forward, even with about two meters between us, it seems to move on. So I'll take a couple of shots and I'll show you one of them. Here's the common data. It's a female type. Yet more fruits. Look at these crab apples. Loads of them. Plenty of food for the birds this autumn. So it's time for me to head back from a lunch break now. It's great to get those four spotted fly catchers. That's three up on what I found at the weekend. No luck for red start or wheat here, but I'm probably better off early morning for that. Um, I did also just see what seemed to be a Jersey tiger moth just fly past me. So they're uh, species which uh, generally found in places like South Dorset, um, but there are known to be some local populations in Buckinghamshire. So these are probably from those populations and have just started to spread this way a little bit. I did have one on my uh, balcony a few days ago. So anyway, uh, back to work and hopefully I'll get some time to go out after work today. Okay, so I've finished work for the day. So I've come for an evening walk. Just walking around the small lake here, seeing if there's any dragonflies in the corner here. But I think the sun's moved down a bit too far now, so we're probably better off trying the little uh, ditch that we looked at earlier today. So um, let's have a wander around and see if we see anything. The sun seems to be going down quicker and quicker every time I come out. It's, um, let me see what the time is. Quarter past seven. The sun's almost gone down behind that hill there. Yeah, it's a lovely evening. So I don't know if you could hear that while I was speaking, but um, four yellow wagtails just flew over. I could hear them calling, and uh, I did manage to get a couple of shots of them just in the distance there, so I can show you what they look like in the air at distance. You just see a little flash of yellow on the bellies, but otherwise they're very small, so you can't see much detail. But this time of year, and leading into September, is when they're all moving back south again on their way back to Africa. So uh, a nice, clear, sunny day like this is the perfect time to look out for them. And there we go, that's zoomed in as far as I can. You can just make out the yellow belly there on the bird below. Here come the grey legs from earlier. So it's eight o'clock now, I'm gonna head back. It's quite quiet this evening, although it was quite busy with people. Uh, I did just see a juvenile common gull, which is quite early. In fact, I don't know if you can see this. I've just seen there on the hill, there's a muntjac feeding. Um, yeah, a juvenile common gull, which is quite early. I don't think I've ever seen one here in August before. Um, I did also get kingfisher, uh, great spotted woodpecker and green woodpecker here. Um, some migrant hawker dragonflies and um, just a really nice evening to be out to be honest. I'll just show you the colour of the sky now. Looking stunning. So I'm going to start heading back. We might still get some bits and pieces on the way back. That's the juvenile common gull. Quite distinctive underwing pattern. And uh, I also just saw a female teal fly into roost near the uh, islands and the trees at the north end of the lake just now. Okay, so I'm back at the flat now. I need to get ready to go to the gym for the first time in some time. Beautiful red sky over there. This one's back on her nest. How are you doing? You been out today? And I'm gonna uh, set up the moth and insect trap tonight, which um, I'll do in just a sec. I'll get that together and I'll show you that too. So first off, we've got the bucket, the clear bucket, the top's clamped on, some um, 
egg boxes in there for the uh, moths to hide in. Generally set that on the table like that. Then we've got the actual lamp, which is a pendant lamp that I've modified. So this is all um, homemade gear. I'll explain in another video how I've actually put this together. But for now, I'm just gonna hang this on the hook of my balcony up there. There we go, so that's the setup. Hangs from above, sits in the bucket. Cable comes inside. We can switch that on now. There we go. Got one white LED bulb and one UV. She's not one bit bothered by it. Now we've got one moth actually on the door here. That's a lesser broad bordered yellow underwing. You can actually see the uh, yellow underwing there. Right, so I'm just back from the gym and we're just checking on the moth trap. You can see a few in there already. Let's see what else comes while we're sat here. There's a broomstone moth like the one we had this morning on the ceiling. There we go. Jersey tiger moth. What a beauty that is. Those pretty much black and white stripes and bright red underwing. Let's see if it will show us the red underwing. Doesn't seem too bothered by me, does it? So I've just come into my bathroom and found this small tortoiseshell butterfly roosting in here. I'll leave it in here for tonight and then uh, let it out in the morning. Okay, so that's all for today. I hope you liked the video bit rough around the edges but that's how it is in real life um, I will try and do this sort of thing every day if I can if not I'll post every couple of days uh, please like and subscribe if you subscribe then you'll be able to see the next episode when I release it so have a good evening and see you soon